When it comes down to sort of motivated sellers, what 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 does a motivated seller look like to you, Guillaume? What 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 are the benefits of of them? Yeah, so basically, so going back to my own story again, motivated seller is someone where they've got a, a log jam in their life uh, caused by their property problem, and selling their property will solve their problem. Or somebody dealing with the property will just remove this big thorn they have. And the truth is, ninety percent of properties on the market, you know, they are a waste of time because you know people want to achieve the best price and they want, you know, they have, they have time to sit on it. But it's not really, uh, you know, you can buy one or two properties and then and then you run out of money. So the way we, you know, we've studied success, you know, I've had interviews and discussions, coffees uh, and whatnot with, um, you know, 400 plus of the most successful people in, in the country and then really boil down what works uh, and how can you do this again and again, you know, in the long term. And uh, you, you have to buy from people that need to sell, you know, or so for who the price is not the most important, but maybe the speed and the certainty is more important um, and sometimes just the certainty, you know, um, or, or or sometimes where they've, because we've got a property problem. So the bigger the problem you, you solve, the bigger, you know, the, the bigger, the less the competition, the bigger the margin. So, so really the quality of the deals you will find directly is directly linked to how big the problem is for the vendor or or motivated they are to sell. And it could be they are motivated because of their circumstance, because they are moving countries, or they have to uh, pack their stuff and go really quick, or or, or um, Mrs. Smith wants to screw Mr. Smith uh, because they are getting a divorce and and uh, they just want she just wants to uh, to cash in on the on the on the house uh, as soon as possible. You know, there's all sorts of stories, and uh, you know, property is a people business, and uh, uh, you 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 want to approach these things with a lot of empathy and 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 make it a win for them, making a win for you, and therefore it's going to be a win for the universe. But you know, it's not a Shark Tank where who are you going to screw today? You know, it's not really, it's not at all how it's going to work. I really believe in, you know, like karma, karma credits, and the thing you put out there. You know, what goes around, you know, comes around. So it's really uh, you will find people that you can genuinely help by giving them speed or certainty or a creative strategy that the mass market can't help with. And so how do we find these is it's a lot of indicators in the in the data basically and the way property filter works is we agglomerate uh, hundreds of different data points across everything you can think of property related so it's the equivalent of having a right move zoopla on the market we cross check this you know like prime location anything you can think of it's all in one place and then we cross check this with lots of other databases and some databases are also proprietary we've made an agglomerator across different things so You'll know things like um, uh, negative equity, if the property is for sale as well as to rent, if it's for sale with multiple agents, if it was listed with one agent and the agent failed to sell it and a new agent has been instructed. And, you know, like lot, I've got tons and tons of indicators like this when the property fell through, came back on the market, came back on the market and was reduced and was, multi, you know, with multiple agents and all these things, you know. Um, and the idea is that amongst you know, amongst 100 property, amongst, you know, 1,000 property, there's going to be a 10 uh, 20 that are going to be your first of first port of call to go and have a discussion with. And it's what I said at the beginning where by viewing 15, 20 properties a month, I couldn't be lucky enough, but the, you know, by randomly booking viewings, you know, on, on these, uh, but the truth is most of us have got time to do 15, 20 viewings a week, um, a month, you know, like three, four, uh, three to five or 10 viewings a week. Uh, and then rather than leaving it to chance, you know, you can go straight to those people where the discussion is going to be a lot more interesting and uh, they are going to have problems and you're going to be the professional who solves that problem. And then every, every viewing you do, you know, there's, uh, there's a story for you to figure out uh, and then there's a problem for you to solve. And then the bigger the problem, the bigger the margins for you. So the first deal we bought with, with Property Filter, for example, uh, was listed at 250. There was a history of three different agents uh, involved. I think they dropped the price twice to 225. We ended up buying it at 173. Uh, we spent a bit of money to make it a six bed HMOs and it's, it, it was revalued at 450, you know, so that's the kind of, the kind of deals, you know, you find, and that's, that's not me, you know, doing 200 viewings to find this needle in the ice sack is, uh, having the, the, you know, the property filter magnet to pull out all the needles of the ice sack and just, just looking at them.